Hi, so I am Betty Jo Barrett. I'm the former Assistant Dean of Academic and Student Success here at the University of Windsor in the Faculty of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. I'm also the Director of Women and Gender Studies currently, and I also teach in the School of Social Work. And welcome back to University of Windsor Open Office Hour Series. So today I'm joined by one of my favorite people, Tony. So Tony, would you like to say a bit about sure, yourself? Sure, uh, my name is Tony Vo, and I'm in my fourth year of psychology with thesis. Great. So. Exam season is upon us. Uh, Tony's got a lot of experience as a fourth year student with exams. And so today we're going to address a very common question that students have. Tony, that question is? So, with me personally, yeah. um, like the first time I ever wrote an exam, I was pretty confident going into it. Mm -hmm. I was studying really well, I was confident. And then when I received my mark, I completely bombed it. Okay. So what are some resources that we can actually provide to students that actually bomb their exam even though they feel like they're confident when they first enter into the exam room. Yeah, and that is such a common experience because testing at university is so much different than testing at, mm -hmm. um, at the high school level, particularly you know, at university you're coming in, you have these big 100 level classes, yeah. sometimes everything is Scantron. Mm -hmm. So first I think we want to talk a little bit about the resources at the University of Windsor that maybe can help you study a little bit better. But then I'm going to chat a little bit from the perspective of a professor. Okay. And when you come into my office to look at your exam, there's some really kind of key things that you can be looking for that might help you set yourself up for success the next time. Okay. So Tony, I know you're pretty familiar with some of the programs here. Can you talk a little bit about the STEPS program? Well, STEPS it stands for Skills to Enhance Personal Success. And it's just workshops that students can come in and we teach and facilitate how students can be able to do um, on different topics of their academics, such as note taking, how to t do multiple choice exam, how to do effective reading strategies. So those programs can, or workshops can be able, students can just come in for free and to learn how they can enhance their studying skills. Great. Um, so that's a really good thing. So we always recommend that when students come in and maybe they didn't do as well as an exam as they thought, to always mm -hmm. use the resources that are available to you. So mm -hmm. STEPS is really great. Yeah. Depending on your department, there might be some resources from upper level students, mentors in the program. So always start looking at what resources are available okay. that you can tap into. But one of the most important things that you can do that a lot of times students never do is to go look at that exam, right? Yes. So I have to say that a lot of times profs are not gonna give your exam back in class, particularly if it's a huge class, right? So if I've got 150 students, I'm not gonna give the exam back in class. You're probably just gonna see the mark on, on yes, the Blackboard okay. system, right? And I would say that sometimes maybe only five or 10 people actually come in and look at that exam. And usually they're the people who aced that exam, yeah. right? I always tell the people who didn't do so well, come in and look at that exam because you can learn a lot from that exam about what maybe you did wrong and you can use that for the next time. Because sometimes students say, well, if the final exam isn't cumulative, we've already done this material, I'm not gonna be tested on it again, looking at the exam isn't actually gonna help me very much. But what your exam can do if you actually look at it is it can help you to understand a little bit about where you're falling short. So when students come into my office, we always go through what I call the post-exam post-mortem, right? <laughs> so we go question by question and we try to deconstruct where people went wrong. Okay. Because sometimes people go wrong for really different reasons, right? Yes. Sometimes people go wrong um, simply because they're stronger at some questions than others, yes. right? And so we'll go through the exam and we'll see that they aced all the true false, they tanked all the short answers. Mm -hmm. And what that really means is, is that it's not that they don't understand the material, they really struggle a little bit more with explaining things without the cues that are normally in like a true false yes. question. So for those students, it's about kind of tweaking their studying so that as they're studying, they're practicing more, how do I verbalize this on my own, yes. uh, versus just using flashcards or straight memorization. Yes. So sometimes it's really just about looking at the question. Sometimes it's not the questions, it's the content. So we go through and we can see they aced all the questions for chapter one and two, they tanked chapter five, right? Mm -hmm. So okay, so now we know that it's a content issue. So did you tank chapter five because maybe you didn't study chapter five so much? That's something that hopefully is easily correctable. Mm -hmm. It might be though that the material in chapter five is a little more difficult um, and we really need to kind of see do we need to go back and revisit chapter five. Okay. Part of the reason why is sometimes the information that you're learning at the beginning of the semester might be foundational to what you're learning later. So if you kind of don't get chapter five now, it might really hurt you on the next exam, even yes. though chapter five itself isn't yes. on the next exam it might kind of have some core knowledge that, that okay. you're going to need to build on, right? Yes. Um, it might be that chapter five is more of a historical overview. Maybe we're never going to visit chapter five again, so maybe that's okay. 
We also look at pacing. So sometimes students will basically ace the first part of the exam, tank the second half because they ran out of time. So with those students, it's really a matter of helping them to better understand how do you actually pace yourself during an exam so that you're not kind of spending too much time on each question so that you can actually get through the whole thing. Okay. The other thing that I really like to talk to students about is students will often come to me and they'll say, but I studied for 20 hours, I knew I knew this. And I always ask them, how did you study for 20 hours? Because a lot of times students do what we call cramming. And yes. so they'll basically, you're familiar with cramming, yes. I can see from your look, and we all are, right? So cramming is the idea of like, oh my God, I didn't do anything for this class, the exam is in one week, I got a week to catch up, right? Yes. Um, and I always use the example of a marathoner. Like a marathoner doesn't start training for the marathon the week of the marathon. And they certainly don't try to run 26 miles the day before the marathon, right? A marathoner uses the day before the marathon to rest up, to let their brain and their body kind of heal. So what we encourage students to do is to think about spacing. So spacing is basically where you take those same 20 hours, but instead of doing them in one shot right before the exam, spread it out over the semester. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is, is that how we learn is through repetition and diversity. Yes. If we're exposed to information more times and in diverse settings, it's more likely to stick. So if I'm studying an hour every day, I'm studying when I'm tired, I'm studying when I'm angry, I'm studying when I'm bored, it's more likely that I'm engaging with that knowledge in a lot of different environments, which is actually more likely that I'm gonna be able to retain it and to then actually repeat it on an exam, right? And so if we take two students who each studied 20 hours, research has shown us, literally hundreds of studies have shown us, that students who actually engage in this spacing who do the 20 hours are actually gonna be more likely to retain that information than students who do the 20 hours of cramming. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about how much you study, it's about when you study and how yeah. you study. And some students implicitly say, well, that doesn't apply to me, I'm a much better crammer. Yeah. And there's actually research which shows that people believe that they're better at cramming when <laughs> really they're actually better at spacing, time. right? Yes. Um, and so there's kind of this self-fulfilling, like so people are like, well, I, I'm the exception, yeah. I'm, the, I'm better at yes. cramming. But you know, the statistics really show us that most people, while well, maybe a few people can really do cramming well, for most people it's really about spacing. Mm -hmm. um, and also going back and kind of talking to your prof is gonna help you build a relationship with your prof and it's gonna help you to kind of learn how your prof kind of approaches exams and that's gonna be more valuable to you moving ahead. So do you have anything else, Tony, you'd like I to I think add? that's good.